The studio mic is unmuted for these two boys. Alrighty. Tap on that. There it is. Uh, I'm not getting anything on Collie. Yes. Can, can you see which one is? Oh, I got it. There's two Collies. Okay. That should be number six. Yep. Two. Just a little. Yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> one,
Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you all for being with us tonight. I want to welcome you to St. Andrews. Uh, are you coming up to you? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm Pastor Manuel. I'm Pastor Manuel. I almost said I'm Pastor Sarah. This is Pastor Manuel. Um, we're so glad to have you with us. If you are new or visiting us for the first time, um, I do just want to let you know that we, our restrooms are available here um, in this hallway, just through these double doors. We also have a gender-neutral restroom available in our other building in the office space, um, so you can just let someone know if you need access to that one as well. Um, and for our service tonight, um, everything you need to know will be either in your bulletins or on the screen, so hopefully you can follow along and participate um, as we tell this Christmas story together. And I do want to thank all those who uh, sponsored all the poinsettias that we have up here, or poinsettias. Um, you can pick those up after this service from this space if you did order one. Um, and then after uh, the 10 o'clock service, you want to come back this evening and pick those up, a couple up as well. Um, and then we do need them for our 10 a.m. service tomorrow morning, our Christmas Day service. Yeah, so our schedule for the rest of this weekend and next weekend is a little bit different. We just have one service tomorrow, Christmas Day, at 10 a.m. And then next weekend, since it is New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, we will have one service at 5 o'clock on Saturday night. And then our Sunday morning service on New Year's Day is at 10 a.m. So even if you stay up to midnight, hopefully you can still get up and be able to come and be a part of church um, on January 1st, 2023. Um, and I, think, I, I do want to make sure we say a huge thank you and acknowledgement of all of our musicians um, for sharing in music and leading us through the service tonight. So thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for our tech support as well um, for making sure we offer this live stream to those who can't be with us in person. If you all want to join me in saying Merry Christmas to everyone on the live stream, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm glad to have you join us that way um, as well tonight. And I think is that everything? So then we are going to start with our opening litany. I want to draw your attention to that first page of the bulletin. An unmarried teenage girl was invited to carry Christ into this world. An ordinary carpenter was invited to be a father to a child of my name and The shepherds were invited. The Magi were invited. Foreigners and seekers, including that And if she was invited, and he was invited, and they were invited, then we can trust that we too are invited. This story is for us. This love is for us. Family of faith, this is our invitation. Welcome home. Amen. I want to invite you to rise as you are able as we sing together, O Come, All You Faithful.
one is given.
gospel tonight is according to St. Luke, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it has been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
moved to you. That was so beautiful. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So again, good evening. As we've been saying, it's so good to have you all with us this Christmas Eve as we gather together again to celebrate this beautiful and mysterious story of Jesus' birth. The story is, of course, very familiar to us because it's been passed down for generations. Perhaps in the early days, it was told around fires as people waited for their food to cook. But then, of course, as the years grew, the traditions and rituals changed and adapted. Different na nations and cultures found meaningful ways to mark and ritualize this story of the Savior of the world being born among us on Christmas. And most of these traditions involve something very important and personal, and that is, of course, food. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of when I was a kid, and whenever discussions happened about get-togethers, my dad would always, almost always say, wait, 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 wait. Before we go any further, we have to ask, what are we going to eat? <laughs> and in my family, as we would gather around the table, the question often would come up, even before we would have taken a bite of that particular meal, what are we going to eat at our next meal? <laughs> like we had to prepare ourselves for the next meal before we had finished the current meal. <laughs> well, we seem to mark our lives by meals we prepare and eat. And this is, of course, means that holiday meals were a really big deal growing up filled with traditional foods passed down from our elders, in a way that we continue to feel their presence in our midst, even after they had been gone for many years. Christmas Eve was almost always at my maternal grandmother's house, Grandma Mayfield, and included roast and potatoes and corn and okra and yeast rolls. And then on Christmas Day was at my grandmother Renamosa's house, which included traditional Mexican Christmas foods, like tamales and pasole, flour tortillas, and buñuelos. The smell of fresh tamales and flour tortillas, and thinking about both of those meals, even though, though it's been decades, it still makes me salivate. <laughs> Just thinking about these meals brings me warm feelings, and comfort, and I just can't stop drooling. <laughs> <laughs> what about you all? Would anyone be willing to shout out something special that you look forward to eating or drinking around Christmas? Anyone willing to share something like that? Yeah, what's it? Kringla. Kringla. That's a really good one. So, yes. Oh, yes. Potatoes. Potatoes? How do you like your potatoes? Mashed? Yeah? That's excellent. Anyone else have something else they want to share? That's up. Lefsa, yeah, that's one for me. Growing up, it was lefsa with a lot of butter and brown sugar, and you had to roll it up really tight. Yeah, I saw a hand in the back yet, John. Prime rib. Prime rib. Yeah. Kroon kake. Kroon kake, and you too. Hungarian goulash. Hungarian goulash. Oh, that is super good. I had a Hungarian dessert once that was like a traditional Christmas dessert, and I don't know what it was called, but it was, it was amazing. Anyone else over here? Did you share anything back here? Oyster stew. <laughs> Crab cakes. These are coastal people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's something like hot chocolate with a candy cane dropped in it, or I read that in Japan, actually fried chicken is a delicacy on Christmas Specifically, Eve. specifically Kentucky fried chicken. Specifically <laughs> Kentucky fried chicken. And of course, like I said, like I said for me when I was a kid, it was always left set at my grandmother's house with the butter and brown sugar. I would settle for, for white sugar too. Either one would be totally acceptable. It makes me realize that while we have built very significant lasting traditions around our Christmas foods, the Bible story actually leaves out the important details about what that meal the Holy Family shared that first Christmas and who might have prepared it. Mary and Joseph had traveled a long distance. They were staying in less than comfortable 
accommodations, and were apparently far away from any close family or relatives. So after Mary went through this unimaginable thing of caring and delivering the Christ child into the world, I wonder who provided her with nourishment. Kind of interesting to let your imagination wander. Did Joseph start a fire, prepare the food they had brought with them? Did the shepherds bring something to the stable when they arrived? Were there local midwives, who the author didn't think to mention, that prepared something for Mary to regain her strength after her labor? I will tell you this, that after my first child was born, the first real meal that I had was in and out burger, <laughs> and it was perfect. It was probably the most delicious hamburger I ever had in my life. And actually, my family just called to say they're driving through in and out Burger right now. <laughs> so whatever Mary ate, I hope that it felt like love for her. Something warm and comforting that allowed her to rest and take in the world-changing miracle that she just offered through her own pain, blood, tears, labor, and love. Kind of makes you wonder, too. What traditions were passed down on Jesus that helped to shape him and his identity? Did he have comfort foods, too? After a long day of curing the sick and performing miracles, what did he sit down to eat with his disciples? Because from the very beginning of his ministry until the very last supper and beyond, much of Jesus' work in sharing God's word was tied to food, drinks, and meals. For example, in the Gospel of John, his first public miracle is at the wedding in Cana, when he changes water into wine. Of course, there's the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, which shows up in a couple different places in the Gospels. And there are several examples of Jesus being criticized for eating with tax collectors and sinners. He even invites himself over for a meal at an infamous tax collector whose name was Zacchaeus when he comes through town. I've always been captivated by this story from Luke chapter 7 when a Pharisee invites Jesus over for a meal and then this woman shows up weeping and anoints his feet with ointment from an alabaster jar. Talk about the ultimate awkward dinner conversation. But it ends up with Jesus revealing the hypocrisy of the Pharisee, while at the same time offering words of comfort, forgiveness, and peace to a woman who is obviously struggling and suffering, whom he says has shown him great love. According to Professor James Campbell, when Jesus was alive, meals were sacred time, when God's presence was awaited and welcomed into every meal. The people recognized that although they had earned their daily bread, God still gave them all they had. Fellowship in a meal was always fellowship before God. This recognition continued in Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples. What, is it, what does it mean to you that the tradition that Jesus asked us to do in remembrance of him is, in fact, a meal. He wants us to find comfort and hope as we eat the bread and wine or grape juice of communion. Something that unifies us across all other differences that we think may divide us. This meal is a promise that Jesus is with us. That God's love and life are more powerful than sin and death. And that there, is, there is, that there is a meaning to be found in community. And yet, it is a simple and accessible. A reminder that God has given us everything that we have. And after Jesus' death and resurrection, it is in fact around a table where his followers finally recognize him as the risen Savior. It's when they break bread with him on the road to Emmaus that they can finally see that all of the impossible promises that Jesus made in his life, in fact, came true. 
And we are called to carry on his traditions of seeking out those in need of comfort and love. Of loving and serving others unconditionally without asking if they are deserving of our gifts or asking them for anything in return. Of releasing the need to be driven by the desire for power and control. Of seeing one another as God's beloved children, fellow members of the family of God. God's love is not something we have to earn or deserve. It is a free gift that came into the world thousands of years ago as a little infant baby. Jesus began his life in a world quiet and humble, nurtured and fed by his mother's love, held closely to her heart, and as Martin Luther himself said in a Christmas sermon, the inn was full. There are many of you who think to yourselves, if only I had been there, how quick I would have been, been to help that baby. Why don't you do it now? You have Christ in your neighbor. You ought to serve your neighbor for what you do to your neighbor in need. You do to the Lord Christ himself. So while our Christmas traditions and meals have changed and evolved and grown, and merged. Well, there are years, and maybe this is one of those years, when perhaps because of loss or illness or difficulty or distance or discord, that the traditions are a source of pain or loneliness rather than comfort. This meal, the communion, continues to be more or less the same. A consistent reminder of God's steadfastness and forgiveness and love that feeds us so that we can go out into the world to feed and care for others in Jesus' name. It is this tradition passed on from our foreparents of faith that brings us together. So on this night, we gather together and tell this ancient story of a babe in a manger a hungry, in a world hungry for peace, in a world hungry for healing, in a world hungry for hope. May these gifts be born in all our hearts and lives once again tonight. Amen.
nice as you are able. And we can applaud for that. It was beautiful. As we continue with our prayers of the church, um, at the end of each petition, one of us will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you're welcome to respond by saying, hear our prayer. <clears throat> with wonder and thanksgiving, for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Your infinite love is born to us this night. With choirs of angels, we proclaim the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You are pleased to dwell with your creatures, and the whole earth sings for joy. Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxy. Guide us to be wise caretakers of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. Lord, in your mercy, you cherish those who are most vulnerable. Protect infants and children, and bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth, attend the dying, and relieve any who are in pain. Shelter refugee families and those who have no place to call home. Lord, in your mercy. Your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us, or known to us, who are experiencing distress of body or mind, missing loved ones, or grieving. We offer now the silent prayers of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of peace with everyone. Peace to everyone online with us tonight too. Peace be with you wherever you are. <laughs>
sparkly. Okay, welcome. Hi. Are you uh, excited that it's Christmas Eve? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> of course. Do you, have you done anything nice since you've had a break from school the last couple days? Yeah? What are some nice things that you've done? You get to help around the house. That's amazing. I'm sure your family appreciates it, too. Have you done anything kind of special at all yet, Mia? Uh, baking cookies. Baking cookies. That sounds like so much fun. Do you watch any Christmas movies yet? Home Alone, classic. We watch, we watch the new one, Home Sweet Home Alone. Have you seen that one yet? It's a little wild. It's funny, a little wild. I'm, I'm always, I like the classic myself. Um, I was wondering, do you all know anything about things that babies need? What kinds of things do babies need? Bottles and cribs. Baby food. Baby food. Spoons to eat. Yeah, eventually. At first, they don't need spoons, actually, but as they get a little older. What are some other things that babies might need? A parent, yeah, someone to take care of them. Any other ideas? Pajamas. Pajamas, Pajamas would be nice, especially the ones with the feet on them, on the bottom. Do you have footy pajamas? Oh, my gosh. Water? Yeah, they, well, when they're little, little, they don't need water right away because they just either drink milk from their moms or formula. But as they get a little older, they do. What happens when a baby needs to go to the bathroom? They need diapers. That's right. <laughs> right? It's a lot of work taking care of a baby. Have you ever thought about that? So something that we are remembering at Christmas time is, you know, I think we think about Jesus sometimes as someone who's kind of like a a fake person in the story or like, you know, like a myth or something like that. But what we're remembering is that when Jesus was born into the world, he was born as this little baby who needed a lot of help, just like all little babies need a lot of help. He needed a place to sleep. He needed food to eat. He needed someone to help change his diapers when he went to the bathroom, right? Yeah? Did they have diapers? Not the way that we do now. They had to wash them. Right? So back then you couldn't just throw a diaper in the trash. They had to, they had certain fabric that they would use that they would wrap up around the baby. And then when the baby made a mess, guess who washed them? The mom, typically. Yep. Uh huh. And some people use those kinds of diapers still today, cloth diapers and things like that. Um, but the baby Jesus needed a lot of help, just like every other baby. He was helpless. And you know something that we talked about that every baby needs, but we haven't talked about it yet? And that's a lot of love and care, right? Babies need love. They need to be held. They need to be sung to, right? And so one of the things we believe is that one way that we can show love to Jesus, since we can't see Jesus in the same way that maybe people did when he was walking around on earth, is that we actually share that love with other people. And that's the way that we show love to Jesus and help Jesus. And sometimes that it means holding babies, and I'm just fine with that too, right? That's a special thing sometimes we get to do, um, but to help and care for others. And that's a special part of Christmas, right, is that we not only get to be given gifts and feel loved and cared for, but we actually get to share that love and care with other people. And that's actually a really good feeling, I think. It's something that makes me really happy too. So we're going to say prayers, and I'm going to have the congregation can say this prayer too. We're going to do a repeat after new prayer. And do you want to make our hands like they're a little Christmas tree? So what if we hold it, held our hands like they were a little Christmas tree, and then when our prayer is done and we decide we're going to say amen and be done with our prayer, we're just going to shoot our Christmas tree up in the sky and then it's going to Yeah, I think that would be good, right? But for now, it's a Christmas tree, and then there'll be a rocket. So you have imaginations, right? Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Christmas cookies. Thank you for Christmas cookies and warm pajamas and, warm and, pajamas. and hugs and care and, hugs and, care. and Christmas, gifts. And Christmas gifts. gifts. Thank you for the love of Jesus that we get to share with others. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to shoot our prayers up. Thank you all for coming up. You can head back to your seats and Merry Christmas.
We do want to welcome you all to communion tonight. You do not need to be a member of this church or Lutheran. All are welcome to come forward, eat, drink, and receive. Um, in just a little bit, you're going to come um, forward down the center aisle. Um, we'll have two stations, so either side, depending on which side you're on, you'll just stay on that side of the room. Um, you'll receive a piece of bread. We also have gluten-free crackers available, so if you need that, please let us know. We can provide that for you. And then you'll take a few steps towards the outer wall where there'll be little cups of wine or grape juice. The grape juice is the darker color liquid. The wine is the lighter color liquid. Then a few more steps, we'll collect your empty cups, and then you can head down to your seats, back to your seats down the side aisles. Um, if you would rather just receive a blessing if you aren't communing tonight, you can just fold your hands. Um, you're still welcome to come forward, and we'll offer you a blessing. Or if you need to stay in your seats for whatever reason, um, we can bring communion to you after we've served everyone who's come forward. Just let the ushers know, and they'll let us know so that we can bring communion to you. Um, as far as kids go, um, kids are welcome at communion as well. It's really up to you as the parents, so we'll ask you as parents if we're um, able to serve um, communion to the kids. Um, and you can let us know. And again, if, if they aren't ready for communion, they can fold their hands and we'll offer that blessing. And it looks like most people have their name tags on. We do offer communion by first name. Um, so if you have that name tag on, we'll be able to offer you communion by first name. Or we may be asking you for your name as you come forward. I think that's everything you need to know. The table's been prepared and all are welcome.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Hopefully you received a candle as you came in. We're going to come around now and share the light with you. So you can get ready to see the sign of the night.
the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life be blessings for you today and always. Amen. 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 Extinguish your candle. Together we sing our final song for tonight, Joy to the World.